what's going on everybody welcome back to another video uh we got an afternoon charter today we're kind of chasing the high tide we're wanting to fish the high tide for snook and reds weather's warming up the snook and reds are getting more active active especially the snook you have to excuse me i just woke up jake's laughing uh so first thing we're gonna do is i'm gonna take you guys out we're gonna do a video again on catching bait because our last video did well we got a lot of questions a lot of comments and um, we start our morning here when we're gonna get bait. We start our morning here in Ruskin at the Little Manatee River Bait Shop on 41, right before you get the Manatee Bridge. And uh, and I just wanted to walk in and show you guys. I wanted to introduce you guys to Miss Brittany. I wanted to walk in and kind of show you guys what she's got going on because this is uh, this is definitely my favorite bait and tackle shop. You know, I mean she's consistent you know it's it's so hard to find anybody that's consistent in this business but she she has great shrimp daily um she carries fiddler crabs i'm hoping she's gonna have pass crabs this year we've got her fingers crossed and she carries bait buffet chum which is the dry chum that we like to use a lot of times for getting bait uh a whole wall of Tampa bay fishing channel jigs leader line so you can't go wrong stopping by here. But anyway, this is Miss Brittany. I know she was gonna, she was gonna, what were you gonna, we won't talk about what you were gonna be. I think Todd was kind of going in that direction on his video. But uh, holy cow, there's our old boat. There's Brandon McCorkle. We gotta turn it off before he comes in because we don't wanna give him any publicity. He's already, <laughs> his head's that big. He got a new boat. He's walking around, he won't fit through the door. I hope he watches this. He better watch it. But uh, anyway, let's look real quick, guys. Like I said, she's got, um, She's got a ton of shrimp. Actually, today we're kind of thinned out. Well, well, I'm late. So, and I'm late. So it's hogfish season. She's selling them 10, 20 dozen a customer. So you can uh, you can get a hold of her and put in orders and stuff like that. But um, make sure you come by and check her out. And oh, look, look at this guest star. Guest starring Captain Brandon McCorkle. Another yeah, captain I recommend. We're, uh, we're all pretty much friends on the South Shore here. So I don't... Uh, I don't talk too bad about him, especially him. He's like eight foot tall. I'm not talking bad to his face. I'll wait till he leaves, then we'll talk bad about him. So let's get some big get out here. All right, guys, so we're back out here. We made it to the tower. Um, the last video we did, we talked about getting bait at the Skyway. Uh, as the water warms, the bait starts coming in, starts getting up around the towers, heading towards the flats, stuff like that. So I wanted to do a, uh, do a quick video to talk to you guys about getting bait on the tower. Usually, and, and, and I got this guy with me, Captain Easton Grimes, the wood line. What's up, everybody? <laughs> so, um, like I said, we're going to talk to you guys about getting bait on the tower. I would say normally, 75% of the time, I want to be on the upcurrent side of the tower. Yeah, that's how I always do it. Uh, and he's, he, we, we parked behind here on the down current side, and uh, I don't do this. So I'm hoping that it works, and I have a new new way to do it because a lot of times you pull up and there's boats already on the front side and I'm like well I'm going somewhere else but right. if this works hey it's a new opened up a whole new world so this only worked for me the other day because like Easton was saying I pulled up and there was boats sitting on the upcurrent side of the tower one of the biggest risks with being on the upcurrent side of the tower is you lose a lot of nets you will you will hang a cast net if you don't watch it uh, two, if your trolling motor, say you're pulling your net, your trolling motor shuts off for any reason, oh, yeah. your boat's into the tower. Yeah. So I came around after I saw those guys sitting on the on that side, and I got on the down current side, and if you guys have watched Tampa Bay Fishing Channel, Todd calls it his trick. Yeah, Todd but does it. Todd does it. Yeah. So that's kind of, I was like, you know what, let me try this, let's, let's see what happens. So I came to the down current side, Todd was ripping out, and I started chumming behind the pole. And I'm watching the guys throw on the other side. They're not catching anything. They're all marking bait. I chum behind the pole. And whether I got lucky or not, I don't know. I threw one time and I was done. So uh, how do you think Todd's gonna feel about putting all of his secrets out to the world? Well, Todd does it. Uh, he, <laughs> does he? He, he does his trick a lot. So, does he? Okay. Uh, so we're good. We won't tell all of his secrets. So. <laughs> but uh, some we gotta keep to ourselves. So anyways, what we're gonna be using today, and you guys have seen me use this before, is bait buffet chum it's a dry mixture of a buddy of mine out of barto and his son gordon and wyatt shanks own bait buffet chum and 
make it right there in Bartow and uh, distribute it to some of the tackle places around here. Like you saw this morning, Little Manatee River Bait Shops where I always get it. Uh, there's other things you can use. Easton, Easton is one of the most old school captains I would say out here anymore. And uh, so what he does, oh, there goes just the to show you guys that there's, I would have been ready if you would have gave me a heads up on here. <laughs> so you got the Clover Valley, you got the Iberia. Pampa makes a good Jack mackerel. I mean, it's all the same. Yeah. Some of it's more watery, some of it's more oily, but uh, I don't know, lately I'm, I'm really starting to catch on to, to the chum idea, especially because especially when you're in big current like this, because you can just use so much more. But if I'm up on the flats, I've been next to guys. I mean, what do you mean guy? You pointed at me, the guys like you. I've yeah, been guys, next to guys, guys like, like you, them. throwing the fish food chum, and it's great stuff, but I don't know, I feel like this gives me a little advantage, because I've been next to guys and all the bait comes to me when they're throwing I probably shouldn't be saying this. So stuff, no, <laughs> so so that's what that's what we used to do back in the day before um, the dry chum got so popular. And the, to me, the dry chum is just a lot more convenient. And like I said, you can use a lot more. But a heads up, if you do decide to use the jack mackerel, and you go to a store to get jack mackerel, everybody wants to go look near the tuna. Don't look on the tuna aisle. Uh, it's usually on the international foods aisle with the with the Spanish foods. They do have it on the next in the canned foods aisle, but yeah, if that's out, always go to the Spanish food section, and they always have. That and on. it's usually cheaper in the Spanish. It food is. Section. It's always it's cheaper. Like, all right, guys. So basically, like I said, that's the rundown. That's what we're doing. We're gonna start chumming on the back side of this pole. We are gonna use the bait buffet chum today, and. Uh, you know, another thing really to point out too is with the jack mackerel, yeah. you will get more pinfish. If you're targeting pinfish, you will get more That's pinfish true. with the jack mackerel. So, and you can mix it in because you're going to mix in water anyway. Right. You could just mix it, mix this in. It's got water in it and jack mac. But so, I think I'm going to save my cans for me. So let me give you the rundown real quick on the bait buffet chum. I'm going to put about. I'm going to put about to start with about probably an inch of water in the bottom of the bucket. Tear the tab, which I just oh. learned today. Easton pointed out there's a there's a tab on it. And look, it opens the corner perfectly. Opens the corner perfect. See, I always go dry chum first, but this is a learning experience for me. It's kind of like mixing uh, drywall mud. Yeah. You always put water in the pan before you, that way it doesn't stick. Yeah, I like it. I just dump it in and just scoop some water in as I go. So we're gonna go with, hopefully the bait's not gonna be that hard. We're gonna go with about half a bag. Mix it, fix mix it to kind of a paste consistency. I'm gonna get the net out of the uh, hatch here. There we go. So you can see, I've got it. I've got it in kind of a paste consistency, and it's fun to play with too, guys. Play with it. I mean, every time I take a bucket from Jake, there's like 30 little balls already made in it because he's been sitting there playing with <laughs> oh, it. Oh, really? So feel free to play with your chum. Uh. And I'm gonna ball this chum up, and I'm gonna put it right on the backside of this tower. And the reason I'm putting it against the tower leg is what that does is it keeps the current from just sweeping it out because we got a we got a current probably flowing oh i want to act like i know what i'm talking about but what like 1.5 miles know, per hour i don't i would say it's flowing hard hard and if it wasn't for youtube i would add a couple words after that like hard as hard as something i don't know fill in your own you might have to get a little bit closer man it's starting to push the troll motor I feel like we're getting further away. Now are you you're throwing up to that pole, is that is that a pole that uh pulls more fish, more bait, or, or is the other pole just as good? Or sometimes they like to pick I think the other poles is good. Yeah. But the reason I haven't been throwing this one is because last year we pulled up a piling that was like 15 foot long. Okay. The bottom right here. So that makes sense. And the only reason I asked is because throwing it that one, you're kind of throwing into the wind. But that makes sense if there's stuff on the bottom of the other one. And I haven't been seeing them come up. I've been marking them. Really? You haven't been seeing them whenever, you, not, whenever you're throwing? Not at all. I've been marking them and just letting it, letting it sink. Oh, see them? See them? See them? They just came up. Yep. Yeah, yep, they're in it. You want to try to see? Yeah. Let's see if I can embarrass myself with this cast net this morning for you guys. I want to uh, I want to give a shout out too to my boy Jim Dandy. If you notice, we're on uh, my son Captain Caleb's Avenger today. We're still waiting on our boat. It'll be they told us it'd be a couple more weeks, so Caleb was kind enough to let us borrow his boat, which is huge. So definitely appreciate that. Look good. Yeah, 
they're down there, they're all the way from here back to... It's pretty. And after you throw, the, the important thing in deep water is let that net sink, let it sink, let it sink, let it sink. A lot of times that bait will be down deep. They'll try to outrun it and go deep. Yeah. Let that joker sink. Yeah, once that net, get, once you think that net's on the bottom, give it a few more seconds. Yep, let it sink more. A lot of people I see on the towers and the bridge throw and immediately start pulling, trying to get yeah. that bait that they're seeing. Yeah, you see that bait on the top, and if you don't, like you said, when the net hits the water, they got all this area to go, and they right. go down, they go away, but a lot of times you get it off the bottom. Yeah, a lot of times the bait's a lot thicker down deeper yeah. than what, it is, what you're seeing. Let's see if we got anything. Flash for me, let me see some color. There's a few in there. Hey, we'll keep chumming, they're coming. We'll keep chumming. Keep getting these guys up. Not the uh, not the best shot in the world. Not the most bait we can get in one shot, but it's a start. And what that lets me know is they're here and they're they're catchable. So now we'll see. Yeah, it's you know it's it can be tough, especially this time of year. And I'm throwing a 10 foot quarter talon cast net from Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. And uh, you know, you used to remember we thought years ago you had to throw a 3 8, it had to be the heaviest net you could get. Yeah. You know, I throw a quarter 1.5 and just let it sink. It, it does it does fine. Come on top of the hard. Oh yeah. This one's heavier. This might be that meat shot. This might be that shot. Oh, yeah. There it yeah, is, there folks, go, the baby. meat. The meat, that's what you want to see is it's baiting the horn. There's the meat. Yeah, it was, the, it was really the third throw. Right. It people, was one, <laughs> people will throw 15 times and finally get a good one. Like, it was one it and was done, one and baby. done when I finally got it. <laughs> when I finally got it. Yep. There you go. You want to dump that straight in here? Yeah, let's do that. That is what it's supposed to look like. I like that chumming on top of the net. I, think, I gotta figure out how to do that when I'm by myself. I guess I get, once you throw, you get to start Just jumping. hurry up and start jumping. Yeah. That was a shot. Right there. I like the it. Avengers got one of the largest live wells known to man. Known to fisherman. It's huge, dude. Caleb told me. Caleb told me you could put enough bait in here to run like six charters out of it. I mean, that was a shot right there, and we didn't come close to filling it. That's pretty impressive. See, last time I, he had to coach me a lot, but I think this time I'm gonna be ready with the uh, he throws. I'm gonna be chumming on top of that net because now I know what to do. Never dull, man. <laughs> Never dull. You can always count on when this guy's on the boat with you. You're gonna be entertained. Which is a good thing. Are you about to throw? I don't know what I'm about to do. I'll just wait a minute. Okay. Because uh, I see him, dude. I'm having fun, dude. I this see him. Yeah, wanna... they're down there. I don't want to throw on them. Okay. You ready? Yep. Oh, dude, that. I'm coming before the net even hit the water, dude. Not a great cast there, <laughs> but. When you're in deep water though, sometimes it doesn't matter because once it gets down there, it kind of just opens yeah, itself up it, a little it bit. Doesn't matter, no. And you're throwing against the wind, I would say you're doing a fine job for, for as windy as it, as it is, throwing straight into it. Oh, oh we got the meat. That's them strobe lights. Right? We got the meat and strobe lights. <laughs> yeah, strobe lights. <laughs> I'm gonna get this out of your way because I put it in the, put it in the back spot. Put in another bag of here. Heat. Right. 
some things. There are some threads in there, but I, I don't think mind it's that white bait. No. And I just want to give everybody a PSA. Whenever the captain uh, catches the bait, whoever's catching the bait, I know what you're going to say. Let him deal with the net <laughs> because everybody wants to be helpful. And I get it. They come and they're just like trying to shake them out. And I'm like, leave me alone. It tangles the net, is what it does. And, uh, <laughs> I knew exactly what you were fixing to say. I hate it so much. <laughs> it is good to be helpful. Pick the ones yeah. up off the ground. Let the, let the net guy handle the net. Dude, I think we might be good. Uh, dude, if we're not good, then... I mean, we could just see how many throws it takes to max out this live well because... It's still not full. I mean, I would say it's, it's definitely ground out. But I, I can't see the bottom anymore. And I'm pumped, dude, because I thought we were coming out here to make this bait video. I was going to have to throw the net. And I don't think I need to. I'm good for about five or six throws, man. <laughs> But I'll, I'll tell you, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, <laughs> go ahead. I was just gonna tell you my secret. A lot of guys think the day they get their captain's license, they gotta go out and buy them a nice set of Grundens, Grunders. I don't even know what they're called. These are gills, but it's the same style. What I like to do is I like to come out here not wearing any underwear. Now you wanna bring your underwear because you're gonna throw the net and you're gonna get all wet, but you wanna be dry during the day. So, no underwear now. Do you, are you serious? Yeah. I you got my underwear. You're not, you're not wearing underwear right now. But I got them in the bag. And I'll show them to you, but you know what a pair of underwear 15 looks. years of fishing together and you never told me you weren't wearing underwear. Because by the time we're fishing, I have them on. So I, I go, I catch my bait, I let my shorts drip dry, and then I change into a dry pair of underwear and I feel good for the rest of the day. Um, I, I, I can't so I can't get past the fact right now the only thing that's separating me from the business is a uh, thin sheet of it, cotton. And it's thin. <laughs> this is quick dry. Quick dry. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alright everybody. We're blacked out. We had fun catching bait. That was fun. Uh, it's like I said, it's never dull out here. Yeah. We'll put our uh, we'll put our information at the end of the show. You know, give one of us a call. If if you want to ride with us to get bait, I don't really have a problem with that. Just give me a heads up. And uh, you can ride with us to get bait if you want to learn how to do this a little bit better. And other than that, guys, I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed watching this guy. I mean, I I was going to walk you through the process. Uh, so I guess we're all probably all lucky. That, uh, I, we're all, I just talked about it. Instead of showing you how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're gonna go. We're gonna go pick up our customers. Go catch some fish. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, God bless everybody. We'll see you guys on the water.